Hi, I'm Mustafa, a machine learning engineer here at Google. I led the TensorFlow high-level API team. I help many projects apply machine learning in their products. Currently, I'm leading a machine learning team in Ads. Today, I'll share insights about machine learning engineering. These insights are based on my personal experiences. They help me become a better engineer and a better leader as well. I was a strong software engineer. At some point, I became interested in machine learning and was literally captivated by its beauty. For example, the idea of overfitting is so simple, yet very powerful and insightful. I choose to work at Google since it's one of the best places to learn machine learning. When I started working as a machine learning engineer, I got my on-the-job training from the best of the best. During my transition from software engineer to machine learning engineer, I struggled a lot until I expanded my mindset. Later, I used these insights to improve the effectiveness of my team as a leader. There are a couple key messages I want you to remember. As an individual contributor, being aware of mindset shifts will help you decide which one of software engineering or machine learning engineering is right for you. It will help you to be a better machine learning engineer. As a leader, being aware of these mindset shifts will help you to effectively manage a machine learning team. Increasingly, many leaders have a machine learning team under their responsibility. So even if you yourself are a software engineer, it is important to understand these mindset shifts. These are great talking points when you are coaching junior engineers in your team as well. As a software engineer, most of your time is spent implementing new functionalities. As a machine learning engineer, most of your time is spent on experimenting. These two ways of spending your time have different characteristics for planning and measuring success. Planning. When you implement a functionality, you know that the task is complete when you finish implementation. You can plan accordingly. When you perform an experiment, you cannot know the outcome before performing it. That means your next actions will be determined based on the outcome of the current experiment. Your plans should be more dynamic. As a software engineer, if you make your unit test pass with a clean code, that means a successful day. You implemented a new functionality. As a machine learning engineer, most of your experiments will fail. Your success is not having an improvement on the product metric, but the learnings. If you learn new insights by each experiment, that means a successful experiment. With the help of all these insights, at some point you will make a product impact. It's important to build a culture of reflection and analysis of failed experiments as well. We can call this a successful failure. As a software engineer, most of your time is spent coding. And coding is a blessing in a sense as you can be in a flow state quite often. As a machine learning engineer, most of your time is spent analyzing the current and previous experiments and data. The insight you get by analysis will change the actions you will take next. In a good software system, you have a modular design with high cohesion and low coupling. That's a wonderful world. That means you can isolate modules and work on them without considering the world outside of that module. Unfortunately, in the current state of machine learning engineering, we are not living in that clean world. Things are complicatedly dependent on each other. We worked hard to simplify the dependencies and still these complexities exist. Let me give you some examples of complexities. Think about a self-driving system. You will have lots of different machine learning models and each output will be an input to others. What does that mean? That means any change in one model will change the feature distribution in another. How would you train models independently in this case? There is even a dependency of a model to its future self. Think about a video recommendation model. The model itself will determine which videos to show to the user. That means the model itself has an impact on its own training data. On one hand, you should try to mitigate and minimize these dependencies. But on the other hand, you need to accept them and continue to monitor their impact. As a good machine learning engineer, you need to invest a good amount of time to understand all the moving parts in the bigger system, not just your model. There is also an interesting difference in functionality versus quality between the work of software engineers and machine learning engineers. Especially leads in the product need to understand this difference. In the software engineering world, when you plan next projects or roadmap, you will think in terms of functionalities. 
you may have a rough estimate of time needed to implement functionalities and priorities of them. You plan accordingly. In a machine learning team, you will think mostly by quality instead of functionality. What I mean by that? You would have some ideas to improve the metrics, and you plan to work on them. You cannot estimate how much improvement you would get by those investments. This difference needs to be understood by leads, otherwise they would have unrealistic expectations from a machine learning team. Another difference from this perspective is that when you implement a functionality, you just have it. It's considered to be working if you don't have bugs. In the machine learning system, it does its best, but there are always errors. Those errors are not bugs that can be fixed. You can reduce the error rate, but there is always room for error. As a lead, you need to design your system with a tolerance to machine learning prediction errors in mind. Unit testing is one thing I miss a lot from software engineering times. You write a unit test, you focus on making it pass, you know that if you break something, a unit test will fail. By failing unit tests, you know which people you need to inform about the change. In summary, unit tests are great safety nets and focusing tools. Unfortunately, we don't have unit test practices that work like that in the current machine learning engineering state. I personally try hard to write unit tests when we were developing TensorFlow estimators. I couldn't find a way where the return on investments of unit testing is good enough. Let's think about a simple feed-forward neural network you have. The simplest unit testing idea is training that model on fake data and checking the output metrics. That does not work. First of all, training a model is not as fast as a typical unit test. Second, it's not deterministic. In the product, you have random initialization of weights. That means your unit tests will fail from time to time, which is not a good unit test practice. There are some things you can unit test and you should write tests for them, such as feature transformations. What can you do without proper unit testing? You need to evaluate your model continuously and monitor key quality metrics. Machine learning systems are complex by nature. We need to understand the differences of complex systems over complicated ones. What a machine learning team can achieve in a year related to a problem is unpredictable. There are two main causes of unpredictability that we discussed before. First, there are complex dependencies within a model, between models, and even between model itself and its future training data. Second, the best next action after an experiment depends on the analysis of the experiment results. Given these conditions, output of a machine learning team in a year is not predictable. The implication of complexity versus complicated is described beautifully in the HBR article, Learning to Live with Complexity. To manage complexity and be successful, I have the following suggestions to the leaders. Attract the best talent, empower them and invest in them. Focus on defining metrics which will guide the machine learning team. Invest in multiple bets in parallel. Create a culture where learning from failed experiments is appraised as success. I talked about a lot of mindset shifts today, so let's take a moment to summarize. First, while a software engineer spends most of their time implementing new features, a machine learning engineer spends their time experimenting. Since the results of experiments aren't yet known, machine learning engineers won't plan or measure successes based on test completion. Second, a workday looks quite different for machine learning engineers than software engineers. A software engineer spends most of their time coding, whereas a machine learning engineer spends their time analyzing. Third, ideally software engineers work with modular components so they can change parts of a system without affecting the whole. Machine learning engineers work on systems that are complicatedly dependent on one another. Fourth, software engineering focuses on implementing functionalities, whereas machine learning engineering focuses on improving quality metrics. Fifth, software engineers can use unit tests to find bugs, but machine learning engineers rely on continuous model evaluation to improve quality. And finally, the output of a machine learning team is unpredictable, so it's important to lead with that complexity in mind. Are you considering making the shift from software engineer to machine learning engineer? Tell me about your experience in the comments below. If you lead a machine learning team, share your insights in the comments as well. 
and let me know what questions you have about making the transition from software engineer to machine learning engineer. Thank you.